All right, Freck, lightning, everybody. <laughs> we are back, me and Ken Dog here, uh, doing Freck, the consoles again. Um, we are, uh, there's been a couple of announcements. Um, you know, I, there's been a lot of announcements since we, <laughs> since you've seen no, us last, no. but um, a couple of things have come by that we are particularly excited about. Um, but first, uh, we'll talk about Smash a little bit. Oh, uh, actually, you know what? Before we get into that, I'll just, let me just dip in. In Kenny, have you been playing anything? Recently? Um, right now, Alan Wake Remastered came out on pretty much all consoles. It was one of my favorite video games um, ever. It's it, and you you might like it too if if you because you like Supernatural the show. Mm -hmm. It's very much in that vein, but also it's this. It's a video game about an author. Um, so the writing in particular, the story is superb. Um, one of the best written games that I've ever played. And then um, it's also in theme with October because it's a, a supernatural horror-ish type game. So uh, it's been, instead of watching Halloween movies like Beetlejuice, I've just been playing Alan Wake. Um, what about you? Uh, well, I have, well, just to speak on Alan Wake a little bit, I, I am somewhat familiar with it. I hadn't played it myself, um, but I did watch uh, one of my old roommates uh, in college play a lot of it. It is, it looks like a really, it looks really interesting story-wise, um, really creepy. I don't know if yeah. I have the stuff to play it. It's, yeah. you know, <laughs> it's, it's like, very, it's, a, it's like a light survival horror. It's not as hard as like Dead Space, um, but it, it's it still has its like jump scare moments and it's like what the hell's going on <laughs> i don't know like the older i get like the more i feel like i don't know if i can handle survival horror games like i'm like you know that's what? fair I'll just uh i'll just let that be i watch a scary yeah movie. um i've been playing <laughs> like simultaneously like a couple of different games actually um i've been i've been playing psychonauts 2 um nice. And I, and I really like that game a lot uh, from like, it, it's a really solid and I'm, you know, I don't know. I always felt like platformers are kind of like kitty type of games, you know what I mean? But like, I don't know. It's just a really well-made game. You know what I mean? like, yeah. And I, I think that's fair, but Psychonauts, even the first one has always, it didn't feel like a Mario platformer. It always felt like its own kind of platformer. And then like to get the follow-up so many years later and it to be as good as the first game is like almost never happens so yeah and it's yeah it's pretty solid um yeah. and i also have been playing with well, the new uh the nickelodeon all-star brawl um game. um well dabbling or whatever I, like i i've been playing smash brothers too long that it's difficult for me it's just like slight changes but it's difficult for me to get used to it like uh yeah your your muscle memory wants to hit certain buttons but those those have changed in the game i've been meaning to check that game out um i've heard some pretty positive i know it's a little buggy or glitchy right now but i've mostly heard a lot of really positive feedback about that game as it stands yeah it's fun really fun um but to use that as a segue uh to talk about smash brothers <laughs> recently sora was announced uh to be the final fighter in smash um and before I turn it over to you, Kenny, because I know you're a big, uh, I know you're a big Kingdom Hearts fan. Um, I'll just say, like, I did like get a little. I didn't like teary eyed or anything, but just you know, choked up a little bit at the light, the final Sakurai presents, and you know, yeah. like, laid it out, and he just kind of like he kind of played it up a bit too, you know, like oh, Smash is on this, we're finally finished, you know. And, well, it's been a ride, like even the way they open it, they say Sora is finally here it's that nod to the fandom it's like listen we've heard every word you've ever said and what you want and and like sakurai has always had some fun with it and even when he was doing the demo you could see he was having fun with it um yeah like in the um I, you know i really like how they brought it back full circle um like how he brought it back to the smash ballad and uh, mm -hmm. you know, made it a point like, hey, listen, we kept it secret this whole time, but this was the number one requested fighter, and we didn't want to tell yeah. you until we could get it in, and we got it in. Yeah, final uh, fighter, you know. And I thought that was really cool. 
And that's uh, very much in Japanese culture too. And something I respect a lot was they were, they, he said in that direct, he, he was like, I didn't, we didn't want to publicly tell you guys because we know how people are. And it's not fair that you would go and harass other game makers or other studios because every studio is protective of their IPs. It's completely understandable. You get a, an IP like Kingdom Hearts that is 20 years old this year, like, of course, like, and, and there's a lot of moving parts with that, um, with Kingdom Hearts directly um, to make this happen. For sure. And so I'm actually going to have you look elaborate a little bit more because like I know between the two of us, I know that you are the more excited Kingdom Hearts fan. I will say that this I recently I just bought um, before he was announced. I just bought. Well, yeah, I just bought the Kingdom Hearts uh, remix uh, 1.5 and 2.5 uh, yeah. on Xbox because I never I, I, I didn't grow up a PlayStation kid, so I never had access to Kingdom Hearts, but I was always interested in it. Um, yeah. And so when I got access to it, you know, it went on sale. And so I bought it. So I am playing currently the first Kingdom Hearts. Um, I made it to that's the other game that I left out that I'm playing right now. But I, I, uh, I made it to uh, Hercules. Uh, no, not Hercules. Olympus, no, Olympus Coliseum. Olympus Coliseum. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and without like boring everybody to death with my love of Kingdom Hearts and um, finding it and, and all of that. Uh, it's my favorite video game franchise without question. Um, and so they've made it more so, or they've made it easier more so now than ever to play all of the games. Um, they're coming to Switch. Uh, I know they're, they're cloud-based. I'd be shocked if we don't see some limited run physical release of them at some point afterwards. Um, seems like that's usually what happens. Um, but yeah, like, my initial reaction a lot i know a lot of people cried or screamed and were very excited mine was a little bit more tranquil than that it almost felt like i knew it was going to happen but i always was i never wanted to get my hopes up for it um especially like i got banjo kazooie as a as a fighter after banjo kazooie i was like okay like whatever comes next comes next i'm very excited for that and then you get a lot of you have more Fire Emblem, you get some other fighting game characters, which is really cool to see. Never did I go win, win a sore, win a sore, win a sore, because I knew the moving parts in the background. You need to get Disney on board. You have to get Square Enix on board. Square Enix was, here's Cloud, here's Sephiroth. And that was kind of what we thought was, Square Enix was like, this is what we have to offer. Even if you want Sora, these are our top two characters, like without question. Everybody knows those two, even if you've never played Final Fantasy. Um, and so while I'm sitting down um, on my break from work, I open my phone and I see a couple of like little blurbs about Sora and Smash. And I was like, oh yeah, the directs today. I was like, people are probably pushing for this again. And then I saw Kingdom Hearts uh, official account make an announcement. And I, my, I was like, no way, like, no way. And I opened it and I, and my first, the first words out of my mouth were, wow, they did it. They actually did it. Sora is in Super Smash Brothers. Um, I can't, I, I can't believe it. And I watched the trailer and I got teary eyed and the trailer was perfect. Um, the way he's introduced, there's even like, some back lore to why it makes sense in the kingdom hearts universe um because there's a part in after one in between two where he has to go to sleep and the way he he falls asleep in this pod to rebuild his memories is the exact way he comes in through the trailer and so it's like it's just cute little perfect things like that that show like when smash takes a character they they really care and they're not gonna ruin it they they want players to love it as much in this game as they did in the game that it's from um his move set in the in the smash or in kingdom hearts has always translated very well to smash and then watching the the um gameplay he's very combo based which makes perfect sense because that's who he is as a character in the games like it's not hit and run it's not super strong attacks it's combo 
learn your opponent's move set and combo and dodge and through through all of that um and that's what translated here uh i'll go even further the the outfits and like character select um they they did perfect service like fan service to that too all three of his main um franchise outfits are the or main franchise outfits um dream drop distance is there you they even gave us two extras um with the timeless uh river um and well no three extras the timeless river and then the the brave form slash val valor form and the wisdom form um so it looks like they managed to make everything work disney i think is still hesitant because if you notice no donald no goofy in any aspect which is understandable they went here's sora and just sora um because even the the game um the battlefields for kingdom hearts uh they have these stained glass motifs in the background one of the stained glass motifs in the video game has Donald and Goofy pictured there. It's a portrait. Um, they're very small, but in the background in smash brothers, they're replaced with two more generic images from the game. So Disney went cool it on our characters. You can have Sora, but not our characters, um, which is fine. Um, I don't think that those representations are necessary, um, especially all of the other little fan servicey things that we got. Um, so, been cool. Yeah, like I know I, I I'm rambling on a lot, but I think that this is the perfect character to end this iteration of Smash Brothers on. Um, to the extent that it almost feels like we don't. I don't. If if you ask me right now if we're gonna get a new Smash Brothers game in a year, two years, five years, I almost feel like maybe not. Um, maybe not till Nintendo Nintendo does another console. Um, this one competitively is what people agree is the melee replacer. Um, and if they don't agree, they're still playing melee, which is fine. <laughs> um, yes, <laughs> and um, they've added every character that people have truly i mean i don't think anybody wanted steve but whatever um uh, but uh it's like, you know, i mean he was a he's a really popular character you know? i know really and popular. and that's the cute or not cute but that's like the cool nod to microsoft and like this i don't know any other video game that has pulled in every major like title like this from fighting game crossing to platform crossing to all of it so when they say like everybody's here i mean the waluigi fans are still upset he's in the game he's just an assist trophy right um, right, right, right. I, you know listen I, <laughs> the only i didn't want them to put waluigi in it so i'm just glad no. he's not there, but <laughs> yeah listen i'm i'm proud that Sora's is in here too like even like like i said like i'm, I'm when <laughs> Little Mac was the last character that I like thought belonged in Smash. Everybody else is icing on the cake. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, and there's a exactly. Lot more characters after Little Mac. You know what I mean? Like, so you know, and I, I think it's awesome. I think this Smash Brothers. I mean, I've already said like it's one of my favorite video game franchises of all time. Um, I have bought systems for Smash Brothers. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, it will continue to. You know what I mean? Every time, I didn't buy a Switch until they announced Smash Brothers. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I, um when smash brothers came out uh i didn't have a switch at the time but my roommate did um and i it was his birthday like i want to say like two weeks after smash came out i bought this the the limited edition with the pro controller um for him just so i could live vicariously through it i was like here's your birthday present and he was stoked and loved it but i was like oh, i wish i wish i bought it for me but like it's yeah like this there's something that in the back of my mind touched on my heartstrings when i saw it, it it's a, a meme format but it goes it started with and it was mario tripping yoshi from the old n64 mm. and it ended with sora and mario shaking hands and i was like that's that is the full circle which is also symbolism because the smash ball is a circle but awesome all right so 
Like I said, I'm a Smash fan. I'm happy for you, Sora fans. Um, and we can talk about, we can gab about this all freaking day and night. But uh, let's uh, move on to another franchise that's near and dear to my heart. Uh, the Pokemon franchise. Um, there was just some new news that came out a couple of weeks ago. Mr. Ken Dog here hasn't been up to snuff on it. We're going to catch him up to snuff. And uh, we're going to yeah. about that. I'm, I'm pretty hyped about this. There are a couple of things in this trailer that, um, that they show that, I'm really jazzed about as a Pokemon. There's a lot of good Pokemon news uh, coming out um, right now, especially the Platinum and uh, Diamond remakes, yeah. or uh, Pearl Platinum, and, yeah. and Diamond, and then maybe Platinum. We'll see. Um, I feel like and then probably have what made Platinum special, like already baked into its DNA. Then... Maybe, yeah, the the uh, time, like, Garatina stuff, like... Um, mm we'll see uh but yeah no new rcs uh trailer um and i need to watch it oh nice Very Breath of the Wild vibes. I have a sneaking feeling that catching Pokemon in this, like, specific type of Pokemon or filling the Pokedex is going to be so much more challenging. I agree. Um, the more trailers that I watch this, I get down more like Monster Hunter vibes. Yeah. Yeah, and right? I, yeah, you know, and I feel like like, not not just it, not just I don't know this terribly, but <laughs> not just is it true that it'll be difficult to catch Pokemon. Um, I think we'll have to, like, catch multiple of the same Pokemon. You know, yeah. Almost, hopefully it's not as bad as Pokemon Go with, like, catching and not, like, to evolve. But... Uh. What makes me nervous is possibly timed exclusives. Oh, what do you mean by that? Like, you can only catch Mewtwo, like, this day of the year, or, like... I mean, they, they've already confirmed, like, we already see a day and night cycle in the trailer. Yeah. And they, like, showed off the same area just to show off that, um... Yeah. That there are different things, um, gonna be there. That's... I've never seen that version of Scyther. Crazy, you picked up on it immediately. <laughs> this is that's cool. I had to read that off the website, but that was very hard. It's like an evolution. Wait, it's it that's an evolution? Yeah. It still low key kind of bugs me that uh, Scyther got an evolution, but Pinsir didn't. And then Pinsir got a mega form, right? Pinsir did get a mega form. Um, I, you know, I don't know that Pinsir isn't going to get an evolution for this yeah. game. You know what I mean? Because yeah. they, they've already shown like new forms of Pokemon that we already have. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, like, uh, like we got that Braviary that we're flying on. Um, yeah. Which is kind of like the HM fly, but that looks so cool. Like it's so dynamic. We can fly in and yeah. around. And um, then even that flight mechanic seems very Breath of the Wild. So I think that they um, are probably keeping a lot of to that because it's one the game. If you have a Switch, you probably played it at least ten minutes of that game. Um, so so I think that it's going to be like almost native controls for anybody who picks this up. If you play Breath of the Wild, you'll probably be able to play this. 
It's an interesting point, yeah. Um, one thing that I thought was really awesome was the uh, that there's a quick shot where the Pokemon uh, trainer is uh, riding the the fish, riding the Basket Legion. Uh, yeah, and it jumps up out and then throws the Pokeball um, as you're like mid jump. You know what I mean? I'm yeah, like, well, that's pretty awesome. I wonder if you'll be able to do that, like like flying or something yeah. too. And swoop in and throw a Pokeball. You're like, a you're like, oh, I see. I don't. I I don't have, you know, da da da, and like you see it underneath you, um, or it's gonna be, I could see it being like that Monster Hunter kind of feeling a vibe where you need a certain amount of the same, and mm. um, and like once you catch it or like work to catch it, um, kind of like with that, uh, it was Cleavor, right? It was the name mm. of that? So, so that seemed like a boss battle but with a health bar you take it down you make the catch um catch the pokemon so after you catch a certain type or, or every first initial catch might be in a, a battle but every mm. catch after that might be like a uh you walk by you can toss a pokeball at it mm. there's like an odds whether you catch it or not oh i see what you're just saying like the first the, the yeah. first time it would be a lot yeah. more difficult um one thing i noticed about that boss battle that was really cool too is that like all of the different mechanics used in the boss battle um because yeah. at, at first like you the player are fighting the pokemon and then like there was a, mo a moment where the player had a pokemon out fighting cleavor and then yeah. it was, like, back to like just the player kind of fighting with it so you know it's like they're mixing a lot of mechanics like almost like it's an involved the boss battle you know what i mean it yeah requires, like a lot of your i guess more of your attention than pokemon typically you know right uh, let's just uh, hit it try not to kill it and then throw a pokeball this seems but, like a little bit of dark souls dodge roll attack it and then maybe there's a phase change where um poke, you, your pokemon's introduced and then that's when you can more catch it um mm -hmm. i did not say hit it and quit it <laughs> um ah, crap uh but, but yeah um I think that's really cool. Like one of the, thing, uh, the other thing I think is cool. I always think it's cool when um, you know they allow you to customize your trainer a bit. Um, yeah. Um, they've added this and that in there. I think that's awesome. Um, I'm, I'm interested to see like a lot of the the past mechanics and stuff. But but to uh, that's what I was getting back around to the point you were making about Monster Hunter and catching things multiple times. I, I you know I did see in a, in a previous trailer like they were showing little hints of like. Like it's not the Pokédex doesn't get filled as easy as in previous games. So like in previous games, you catch a Pokemon and it's just like, oh, here's all the information of it. Um, it seems like here, um, pieces of information get filled out as you catch the Pokemon. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So it like seems like it and it's like there's this piece of information, and then you maybe yeah. you catch it again, and then it's like, oh, then it can might do this. Or if you, you can catch it at day and then you catch it at night or you can like uh, under certain circumstances, like maybe like like a uh, Snorlax, you need to wake up, but Munchlax, you have to catch with like a uh, honey on a tree. Um, maybe there's like some once you catch both, like it fills in some gaps or some missing pieces like um, 100. I can tell already 100 percent completion of this game is going to be incredibly challenging to do um but it looks like a, a ton of fun and it it seems like one of those games that is perfect for the switch um mm. whether you're playing it on the go or you you know you sit down and play on your tv um i knowing the switch and the on the go i think that's why it's going to be as much of a grind because it's going to be designed to be like pick it up for 20 minutes like while you're on a bus or a train to get to wherever you're going and then um come you come home you sit down you play for like an hour or two mm. yeah i guess uh now my only kind of worry about it uh would just be they haven't and, and they haven't shown as much and there's still time to show more uh, yeah but my only worry is they, they've shown a lot of the catching this is what catching is like this is what you are you're kind of a pokemon researcher and you're kind of going out and all about you're catching stuff and you know researching it um but they really haven't gone into much about like beyond that what is the game yeah about, what are you the doing? story or the lore uh let, do you know anything about where this this takes place i mean other than the island i know that they mentioned the the world that they're in 
in the bigger world but timeline wise doesn't this take place like like before kind of all of the other games it's it's supposed to be uh, like, like they haven't given as as far as i know they haven't given an exact day but it's supposed to be hundreds of centuries before uh the known pokemon games so in an era previous so in an area yeah, before, previous to uh it, well it's it's basically like you know a pokemon prequel because it's i don't think anything has gone back this far no pokemon um lore. pokemon lore wise i don't think so no um so yeah that that's what seems really cool to me um so i'm curious to see more story trailers um if we get i know pokemon never really gives story trailers anyways it's always like here's the cool new thing or the cool feature to get you excited. Here's what's different. Mega evolutions are basically Digimon, um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, like uh, I, this seems it's on my list. Um, definitely another reason to, you know, keep my Switch going. Heck yeah! All right, well, ladies and gents. That's pretty much all we got for you today. Um, if you like the video, don't forget to like and subscribe or whatever. Uh, see you later.